Hey, what's up guys? Bajira here, bringing you another Blade and Soul Destroyer 1v1 Arena commentary on my way to gold ranking. So, this first match is going to be up against the Kung Fu Master. Kung Fu Masters are really defensively powerful, but can also get you in situations where their combos seem to never end and can definitely lock you up in a pretty rough way. Um, you have to be really mindful about when to be offensive against Kung Fu Masters. A, a lot of times in Blade and Soul, uh, you have to be pretty patient um, when looking for openings. Uh, as a destroyer, I definitely have the, uh, the tendency to really want to go super aggressive, force the pressure, do tons of damage, but Kung Fu Master is definitely one of the classes that can shut you down, um, at least stop you from doing that. Fortunately for me, I got a really nice opener against this one, and get him down to around half health before uh, they really have a chance to do anything to me at all. One of the things that's happening in this match is one of the things that's my favorite thing to have happen in Blade and Soul is that you really fall into a good rhythm. You disrupt your opponent's sort of play pattern, you really get a, a hold of their reads, and uh, once you get into the rhythm of the game, um, you can feel it. And that's one of the most fun things about this game to me, is uh, it's an MMO style, you know, <laughs> but really what this game is is a fighting game. And uh, I've, I don't play a ton of like arcade style fighting games, but I do have a lot of MMO PvP experience. So I think being able to access a lot of the sort of competitive aspect, the mindset, the gameplay of a fighting game through an MMO is amazing and something I'm really excited about with Blade and Soul. So this is a pretty sweet combo. I hit him with a shield stun into a grab, a few punches. Once I get out of that, I spin charge stun him, hit him with a few animation cancels into a smash. And right here, I'm going to activate my fury, which is going to give me a charge of my ability to throw this Kung Fu Master up into the air and uh, finish him off with a pilot driver. Really fun combo. And one of those things that just makes Blade and Soul so much uh, fun to play and so satisfying to uh, do well is that when you have combos like that, Man, that feels good. <laughs> and there are combos that are available for you to learn, and the game tries to help you with the basics, but you have a lot of room cre for creativity in terms of how you use those abilities. So you basically learn what you have at your disposal, when it's helpful, when it's useful, and uh, then it's up to your player creativity of when to use those when in an actual combat scenario uh, against an opponent who's doing the same thing, you know, trying to use their creativity uh, against you. So you can learn what the classes are capable of, but what really populates this game, make it so much fun and have it be, uh, you know, a learning experience is, you know, learning what other players are capable of. So you see right there, he attacked into my, into my first application of C and then even though I was going to go charge him, he blocked it and stopped me from doing that. So he knew I, I liked that ability, but at that point uh, he was sort of ready for it and stopped me from using it the way I wanted to. So this guy's already learning and adapting a little bit, and it's already doing much better. He's actually got the, the lead in terms of uh, health pool at this point. But I definitely mean to fight my way back into this game. So in order to get a little bit of quick damage, I'm going to use my grab immediately into smash, which is going to deal a ton of damage to him because it has a nice crit on there too. At this point, I'm going to get him in a couple stun combos right there, and I'm going to finish it off with a Q spin. Doesn't quite get the kill on him, but he's bleeding at the moment. He's trying to escape, and I do feel like I have a little bit of an advantage here. He's so low health, I feel like if I can just get a few more attacks in him, maybe one knockdown or one grab, then I'm definitely going to be able to secure the win. He's really defending well, so I'm going to bring out my shield, which is going to heal me, but also force him into a situation where he needs to respond to that, or he's going to pay. So, after that, get him in a nice little jump stun, finish him off. But uh, some really nice combos against this Kung Fu Master, something I definitely want to learn from. You know, games like that are definitely a thumbs up. Learn from this game and uh, definitely want to apply that in the future. All right, so this next game is up against the Gold Blade Master. Whenever you're pushing for gold and you see a gold opponent, it's pretty much a must-win scenario. You really got to beat these guys to get that, uh, that rating up and get that MMR up. So I'm coming out swinging. You know, I kind of misused my Q there. I like to use my... Uh, my E ability, which is, you know, popping my Fury, uh, along with Q because it gives me a defensive boost and also lots of, uh, lots of rage to continue that spell with, so the beginning of this fight has really not gone my way, and then I immediately sort of just serve myself up for some counters and some stuns, so, you know, I'm not gonna give up on this fight, but I definitely put myself in a rough spot to begin with. Um, as a destroyer, though, I feel like I can fight my way back into a lot of situations. If you have to stall to get your health back with your shield, you have that opportunity to do that. But you also have a tremendous burst damage and a lot of stuns to chain them with. So right there, I catch that guy in a parry stun, 
into a smash, which does nice damage, but I go for my uh, charge, but he blocks that. So I didn't get dazed on it or anything, but uh, you know, it did prevent my stun combo. We're, we're kind of facing each other down right there. Uh, I do have my uh, trinket on cooldown. I also have my little uh, F escape on cooldown as well. And right now, this is a position where I'm probably not going to make it out alive. So. I put myself in kind of a rough spot with the beginning there. I don't think that the next game is going to be that bad of a start. And honestly, the game didn't end up as bad as it could have. So I have confidence that I can fight my way back into this one. And that's what we're going to do. I go for the aerial opener here, but he pretty much just pulls me out of the sky and stops me from doing what I want to do. This is the empowered spin that I was talking about, where I have my defensive cooldown activated, and, uh, you know, you just can spin forever. Uh, unfortunately for this guy, he escapes and then just kind of stands still, so I'm able to catch back up with him and get more damage on him. I'm able to, to back jump out of his little AoE ability there, and I'm going to try to bait him into attacking me there, which he doesn't. He has his block up right now. And uh, for some reason, I ended up attacking into that, which is going to set myself up for a lot of damage here. Uh, not as much damage as he could have done there. I'm going to bring up my shield for a second, grab a heal, try to jump on top of him, but he's able to block that as well. So this guy's doing a good job of blocking, but I do catch him at the very end of the block with my charge. So that was uh, pretty good timing there. I'm also going to be able to get a nice aerial combo on this guy. Like I said, I've been practicing uh, doing more... Um, combos where I throw down into some wrath damage, but in this position, I felt like I was pretty safe to get a, a, a you know, a suplex combo, a pile driver combo on him, and it actually ends up transitioning into some pretty serious animation canceling with combos, and uh, gets me a nice win there. It started off by, you know, using that, that, that EQ combo that can catch a lot of people off guard. If they don't get out of the way, it's going to deal more damage than they probably expect. So same opener here, going to try to get an aerial opener. I try to drop in on him with that Q spin, does not work, but luckily I deflect him uh, with my spin there, which puts him in the defensive, and I try to go for a grab, and he uses his grab break on that, so I know that he's in a rough position right now, because I can get a good grab on him really soon. I did use my trinket as well, so not my uh, not my best situation, but we're both kind of out of defensives. Unfortunately for me, he blocks both my grip and my smash attempt there, so that's a lot of damage that I missed out on. Fortunately for me, I'm not in that bad of a position damage-wise, but he also is able to jump out of my leap stun. So right now, you know, I'm not I'm pretty low on cooldowns. He has cooldowns coming up, and I'm gonna feel the pain of that right now. So he's gonna try to get me in some aerial juggle combos. I'm able to backdash out of that. Fortunately for me, I still have my uh, E ability in my back pocket, and I'm gonna Q spin at him, and he's just gonna try to run away from that as much as possible. So I don't anticipate him turning around to block, which allows me to get a charge on him, and since he doesn't have his, uh, his grab escape, I'm able to do a nice pile driver combo on him into another dash animation cancel. And uh, that was a lot of damage on him. Brings him down to just below half health. So I know he's looking to get offensive here. So I'm going to catch him with my C. Hit him with a pile driver. As he's getting up, I'm going to hit him with a leg sweep into a smash combo. Which doesn't crit this time. If it crit him, he might have been dead. But uh, he's fighting his way back into this. But he's still in a really rough spot. And I have both of my stuns available. He's trying to do some damage here. I Once again, I attack right into his stun. Which is not good for me. Uh, not really feeling super happy about that, but I'm going to spin away, look for a, another C application. He avoids that, but I still have both charges. He blocks my attempt to grab him. Still have both charges. I've got him in my back pocket. I just need to find the right time to use him. He lets down his block. I'm going to jump on top of him, put him in another Q spinny that he's trying to run away from. Once again, didn't learn from it the first time. I'm able to charge stun him in the back, but he breaks that. Fortunately for me, I have my trinket too, so I don't get hit by that use. I'm going to drop my fire on the ground because I know he's coming at me. Unfortunately, we barely lose that duel. Still a really, really good fight, but man, that was a close one. We can, you know, we can learn from that. I feel like attacking into those Blade Master stuns is definitely brutal. Not what you want to do. <laughs> And a lot of times after you suffer a pretty tough loss, your next game is a chance for you to really uh, fight your way back into the, the raiding climb. So we're up against a, uh, a summoner, so instantly what am I going to try to do? Force a little bit of pressure, put the defensor on the back foot, and then immediately swap that damage over to the pet. And I have a lot of cooldowns left. I used my fury, but I'm able to scoop that summoner right into a big smash attack. So I'm about half health right now, but he's still leaving me... Plenty of opportunities to attack him. So I'm going to get him in a grab. I'm going to go for my pile driver combo just because it's such consistent damage. And I feel like I can make plays off of that. A lot of times they will use their little sidestep after you get them off the ground. And that's why you put them in a corner so that they can't really sidestep away from you. Fortunately for me, I have just enough energy to get him in an animation cancel combo there off the stun. And throw my shield up. Unfortunately, it breaks my shield. But because I got so much damage on him, I'm in the lead in terms of health. 
don't have a lot of defensives left, but I do have my C ability. So as soon as he pops out, I'm going to look for him to try to attack me and see if I can block him with my C and get some more damage on him. Instead, I leap on top of him, it looks like. That's what I would be thinking right now, use that C ability. But basically, I'm just right now just trying to close the gap, I guess. Uh, unfortunately for me, I'm losing health once again, getting a little bit low. Catch him in a charge stun and a lovely, lovely smash crit uh, always is a helpful. And luckily for me, it seals the deal in that match. In the second match, I think everything <laughs> everything can go just according to plans. I think sometimes it is a good idea to, to jump on top of both of them, get a little bit of damage in the summoner so they try to run away from you. This time, I went ahead and jumped on top of him, popped my defensive cooldown, tried to snag the summoner, he got away, but I'm still able to turn a lot of that damage on the pet. Unfortunately, I didn't kill the pet just yet, so that's going to give the summoner a big chance to do some damage to me. He throws his pet in defensive mode, and there's really no reason for me to sit there and try to attack the pet. I'm going to swap the damage on the summoner. And one of the things that you can do that you saw me just do there is try to th either throw the pet on top of the summoner or throw the summoner on top of the pet. And that's what I did that time. I threw the summoner down on top of the pet, which is going to give me a chance to use my, uh, my wrath ability. And even though the summoner escaped, the pet was left there defenseless, so I was able to get a quick kill on the on the pet while the summoner was distracted, you know, worry about themselves. So once again, the summoner is without a pet, and uh, pretty much at my disposal at this point. I'm going to start the fight between me and the summoner, uh, pretty much the same way as I did before, is try to get some grab combos. He escapes my grab combo, which isn't that big of a deal, but you saw me already backing him towards the corner. He's going to try to get as far away from me as possible, uh, so that he can hopefully uh, get a pet res. Luckily, I predict the fact that he's going to throw a little flower beam at me, and I hit it with my C ability. Unfortunately, I don't have enough energy to follow up with that charge and uh, throw in the air ability that you can uh, usually use right after. I get him in a snag, but he evades out of that with his little, you know, backwards dash ability, usually F ability. Uh, but that means he doesn't have any way to get in my grab. So once again, we're going with the consistent damage of the pilot driver. You hit him with a few uses of that little uh, punch ability to lower his defenses. You hit him with a pile driver, usually does a ton of damage. And unfortunately for him, he runs right into my range, and I'm able to red spin him down. So pretty insane match against the Blade Master, but luckily we get a nice one against the Summoner to make up for it. Either way, guys, that's going to bring me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Plenty more Blade and Soul content on the way. Be sure to hit this video with a thumbs up and a comment if you enjoy it, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!